Here is an 8-port video audio switch box. This is a very simple, passive little switch box. It uh, takes in eight sources, the traditional composite yellow video and white and red stereo audio connectors, and it switches them to one single output. And no power supply required, it's just a simple mechanical switch, very solid. Now, the reason why I got this is on my stereo system, I have a lot more sources than inputs on the amplifier. And I thought instead of getting a more obscure and consequently more expensive amplifier that has more inputs, I'm just going to get one of these uh, simple switch boxes. Now, of course, there are switch boxes available that don't have the video section, but those switch boxes, well, number one, I couldn't find one with eight ports. Number two, those all had funky looking plastic cases. This one, to my surprise, actually has a metal case, fully metal case. I saw in the eBay listing that uh, the top cover was metal, but uh, also the front panel, it's, it's all metal. No plastic in this case whatsoever. I like this and that's why I got it. And uh, now, if you're looking for a video switch, I probably wouldn't go for a passive solution like this. Because with the high frequency video signals, I'm not sure if these simple mechanical switches are really good enough for that. But for audio, they are definitely good enough. Of course, this, yeah, this is not high-end, but I don't care for high-end. I want high fidelity, and for that, this thing is good enough. So I thought, let's uh, take a look inside this unit and uh, see how it's built. As I already said, the case is completely made from metal, which is good. Top cover comes off like so, and then inside we find there are two boards. This one in the back has all the connectors going to it. This one in the front obviously has the switch array with the mechanism up front. And connecting the two together are two 14-pin connectors. So we have a total of 28 lines going from this rear board to the front board. That already gives us a clue as to how this works. Um, we have three channels per input. We have uh, eight inputs, so eight inputs times three channels is 24. So we have four connections left over. Those are Three of those are obviously for the three outputs going to the output connector. And then I hope the one remaining cable is going to be a ground connection just to keep everything grounded properly. But just doing these mathematics, we can already tell uh, the grounds are all going to be common together on these connectors. I can prove that with the meter. Yes, it's, uh, it's all common together. The other thing that I can test right now, we do have this metal case, but the metal case is not going to do us any good unless it is also grounded. So I can see the two mounting screws for the front circuit board. Those will be screwed into the case. So let's see. Oh. Well... No continuity to the case, it looks like. Let's uh, try the screw hole over here. No, nope. no continuity to the case. So we're definitely going to change that and make sure the case is grounded. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, take this apart a bit further. 
let's uh, take out these uh, screws and remove the switch assembly just to check the soldering on that. Now, each switch, as you can see, uh, it's a uh, basically it's a four in one switch, and it's just simply you can tell it's just an on or off switch. So it's basically uh, one switch is in the on position and then connects the input to the output. All the other switches are just simply off, meaning all the other inputs are floating, which uh, might be... Well, would that be a problem? I guess in some situations it could be a problem. It would be nicer if it was a, a setup where all the inputs that are not used are grounded. But uh, that's not how they did this. Let's remove the circuit board, turn it around, bring it in closer, and I would say the soldering on here is quite good. I can't see anything wrong with this. Now, uh, we do have this, uh, this looks like a ground plane, so let's see if that is connected to ground. So there is one side. We have these through holes. Nope. No connection to ground. Okay, so... Uh, that's not ideal, I guess. Nope. So, looks like we don't have any ground going to this board. And now the back board is held in place with quite a lot of screws. So, I'll pause the video while I take those out. And this is the switch box taken apart completely. I will be redoing all those solder joints connecting to the input and output jacks because those are not as strong as they could be, as they should be. Now, on this board, what looks like a ground plane actually is a ground plane. It's all properly grounded. And the ground also connects to this pin of this uh, wire. And it arrives over here. Now, it connects to this area of circuit board. Let me pinpoint that right here, this area. The problem is, this area doesn't connect to anything. It does not even connect to this plated screw hole. There is a missing track right there, which is really annoying, because if there was a track, like over here, then this entire section of the board would be grounded too. And then there is this large area in the back, and that's all just floating. So that's kind of a bad design, and I'm going to change that. Well, that didn't take long. I redid the solder joints and modified the circuit board. So we now have a connection here, here, and here. So if I now measure from where there used to be the only ground point on this board to, say, over here, I get a connection. Also, I've added right here this wire, and that connects to a screw terminal, and that, with a bit of patience, I can feed through under the switches. It won't short out anything, obviously, to over here, where the screw hole is. It's going to take some patience. And that is going to ground the case once everything's been put back together. I now have the switch box reassembled, except the ground connection is not yet connected to the chassis, because I want to demonstrate the difference that that makes. So I'm going to put on the cover, like so. I'm going to put in just a single screw, just so that nobody can accuse me of uh, cheating. So we get a safe electrical connection to the bottom half of the case. 
And I now have this plugged into an amplifier, and if I turn on the amplifier, you can hear there is hum. Now, the hum is there because all the inputs of the switch box are open. If I was to connect a source, the hum would disappear. Also, the amplifier is turned to maximum volume. But what I want to demonstrate is, if I now get close to this with my hands, it generates a bunch of additional noise. And now the ground has been connected to the chassis right there. And it turned out I had to trim down this uh, connector on the sides a little bit so that it would clear the switch contacts to either side where they connect to the board. But with that connected, I'm now going to repeat my little test. I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did before. I'm even going to put in the screw into exactly the same place, like so. Turn on the amplifier. It's still on maximum volume. And straight away you can tell the hum is not nearly as loud as it was previously. And now, if I come close to the switch box with my hands, no more funny effects. And that is why you connect a chassis to ground and you don't leave it floating. And that's it. These switch boxes are all over eBay. They go under various different brand names. Mine actually doesn't have a brand name printed on it. What they all have in common is this 8-port logo. For this one I paid about 25 euro, shipping included. And there are, as well as this 8-port version, 2-port and 4-port versions available. But, in any case, if you decide to get one of these, make sure everything is properly grounded. Thank you for watching.